Here in Hobart is the headquarters of the State Library of Tasmania, a building very familiar to the people of the city and the surrounding countryside. Its business is with books and with people and the exacting job of helping one to find the other. Here, books are tools, implements to use when a problem is to be tackled. A key to relaxation and leisure when a busy day's work is over. The stimulant that adds good taste and grace to living. For the library staff, too, books are tools, to be known thoroughly and minutely to be used wisely and well. Much time and care are taken to see that the staff know these tools perfectly and are able to use them efficiently for the benefit of others. Here, student librarians are attending one of the regular instruction classes of the training officer. The subject trainees must study before they may call themselves librarians are many and varied. Planning and design. Administration. Library law. Office routines. Publicity and display. And books. and all with one end in view, to bring a more efficient service to all who use the State Library. But not only books find their way into this State Storehouse, information in all its forms is sought out and preserved for future use. One special section has in its sole care the preservation of documents and manuscripts recording the history of the state. Often these scraps of paper are unique and can't be replaced at any price, so must be carefully handled and guarded as preciously as gold. When information is needed, this is often photographed and reproductions in facsimile sometimes are sent all over the world. In another place are stored copies of all Tasmania's newspapers. Events just news today may possibly be history tomorrow. For some people, only the very latest and up-to-date information is of any use. And for these, the reference library gathers together periodicals from all over the world, on most subjects and in several languages. Through the interlibrary lending scheme, books are often obtained for Tasmanian readers from the mainland, or further afield, from Europe maybe, or the Americas. Sometimes the answer to a reader's problem is found nearer at home, in university, government department, commercial, or industrial libraries, all of which willingly cooperate in making all books available everywhere. For convenience, or because of the rarity of the original, some information from overseas comes in the shape of microfilm or photostat, a whole book in little. Perhaps a map will provide more than a book can, an old boundary line to be located in the hills. Or the course of a rivulet, now closed over. 
Or maybe a slice of history, drawn as some bygone navigator saw it. Sometimes again, the library has the answer in a documentary film, which can instruct professionally, no matter how remote the village or how difficult the weather. And how good then to be able to gather round one's own fireside to enjoy and discuss the world's greatest music. Whatever the means, the aim is the same, to provide adequate material to whichever reader requires it. But with no one is the demand for books greater than with children. As far as possible, to no one who can read is the service denied. Who they are doesn't matter. What they read does. Here particularly are the librarians experts, trained to understand children, to know children's books and the children's view of life. For those who can't get to the library, well the library goes to them. If near to the city of Hobart, by bookmobile, visiting the more distant schools at lunch hour. When a librarian, trained especially for work with children, helps and advises and introduces books worth reading. All children throughout the state have the same library service of books. At the municipal library, where there is one, as at Penguin, or the Launceston Children's Branch Library at Invermay. In other places, the children's service is through the school, where generally the teacher is also librarian, encouraging the children to read widely, knowing the value in education of good literature, and how the promotion of wide and varied interests makes for good and effective citizens. But behind the scenes at the library, it's books. 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 Books and yet more books. Books to be sought out and bought. Books to be repaired in the library bindery, with all the crafts and skill of hand and eye, turning the old back almost into new. Books to be processed with speed and precision to keep up with the demands that seem insatiable from both the young and the old. For the school days are over, the need for books becomes greater as children, grown to men and women, find that knowledge and information are now to be sought after on one's own, with no one now to teach. In most municipalities, the councils operate, as part of their normal social services, libraries such as these at Launceston, Penguin, and Ross, to which people now can turn for recreative enjoyment and information, and satisfy the ever-present wish to know more of people, places, and things. To help and advise these municipal councils, a team of trained librarians work in the country areas. Wherever a council wishes to improve its services, these librarians are ready with practical aid and professional skill, maybe advising on the type of vehicle suitable for a travelling library service to a scattered population or the design of a new building for a library now extended to its full capacity. By discussing with a local librarian, newly published books added to the library. 
or screening informative documentary films to rural audiences. At the Muna Depot, a special staff is kept busily engaged selecting and dispatching collections of books for these municipal libraries and sending them on their many diverse ways, by land, by sea, and by air to the many municipalities which provide free library services. To remote industrial projects, hospitals, lighthouses, hydroelectric settlements, and to isolated townships. And even in the out-of-way places where no social group exists, then through the library's postal service to country people. So goes on all over Tasmania, the distribution of books and information in all its forms, advancing the high tradition in the state of healthy bodies and healthy minds. For as a great king once said, public libraries are as essential to the minds of the people as open spaces to the health of their bodies. <laughs>